Magic, the newly reformatted and redesigned Black Magic TV set. It's beautiful in here. Um, thank you. And with me today, I have Nate Sell. I, yep, I'm gonna that call works. you that for for lack of a better because I don't <laughs> know your last name. That's just what Nate goes by on online. Nate is a musician and an artist. Yep. And I will say you play a. <clears throat> I listened to all the music you sent me, and it's good. Yeah. Um, quality wise, production wise, A plus plus. We tried to high end, high end production. Um, uh, other, not. I don't think it's bad. I. I don't. Um, I tend to anything but jazz. I can generally listen to as a also a musician mm-hmm. and like respect whatever's going on. <laughs> Um, I got very strong, like, industrial vibes. Yeah. But also, like, very heavy, like, 90s hard rock. Oh, yeah. Like, Power Man 5000 or White Zombie. So, it's, like, really this weird stew of, like, dark music, I guess is how I would put it. Yeah, you nailed it on the head with the industrial influences. One of my favorite bands of all time is Rammstein. Okay. Or, or Rammstein. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of, I, I mean, I grew up on a lot of 90s, like alternative rock, metal, stuff like that. So a lot of the industrial influences, like from Nine Inch Nails and um, even like early, like Sepultura stuff definitely had its impact on like what we do in Mirror Cell and everything else these days. Oh yeah. I guess I left that out. The name of Nate's group <laughs> is mirror cell and it's on Spotify right now. Yep. They got three singles up, right? Yeah. Three about to drop our fourth dropping the fourth single. Are you guys, are you guys recording those all in house yourselves? Are you doing that at a studio? What are you uh, doing? Yeah. So we record it in a studio. Um, I record with my good friends, Caleb Fryhot and Ben McGinnis um, out in St. Louis Pretty much, uh, we do everything like kind of remotely. We're starting to get together like more like in person to write things, but we'll kind of like just write stuff back and forth and send it to each other. Okay. Um, and then that's pretty much how it's made. Everything's almost online and then I'll go in and record vocals and get it mixed and mastered by the boys. Okay. So that was like, this is not, you guys don't get together and play as this is like, creating something by sending each other tracks. There was a stoner rock band that did that and they were like super crazy. It was two dudes and they made this insane album and it was like, well, we can never tour because we don't have (laughs) nobody. There's not, it's just us playing this. So it's like, we have to teach other people. So yeah, mirror cell. It's like, I record a lot of the stuff um, with Caleb and Ben um, but then we actually have like an actual band that performs it. So okay. we haven't played any shows yet, um, but it's a lot of the same members from like a lot of past projects I've done in the metal core scene. Um, but we are planning on like playing shows. So there is like an actual band. That, okay, like, we, actual we get band. together and we rehearse all the songs and yeah. like we do the whole shebang. Um, but when it comes to writing and to like actually producing the songs, um, I do it with like a team, so to right, speak, right, as right, right. or myself. Yeah, so. that's cool. That's pretty interesting. Um, I guess. So the other guys, do they contribute to the writing or is this just is it like a hired gun type situation? Um, yeah, if for lack I, of a better term, I would say at this point, it's kind of like that because mirror cell started in a weird way. Um, I had an old metalcore project that was kind of doing its thing in the local area for a while. Um, but then COVID happened. Um, and our guitarist from that band moved back home, uh, to the East coast and the band just kind of fizzled out from there. What band was that? Uh, we were called fear my name or FMN. Okay. Kind of what we went by. Um, we were like a, like horror adjacent, like metalcore band basically. Um, so I was kind of in a weird spot because, I, at the time was going to be doing some type of like solo project, um, off of that band. Cause I thought that band was still going to be doing things and it ended up not really happening. Couldn't really like get it like back together, but I had all this solo work that I was working on with Caleb and Ben. Um, and it was like, it was way different from what I was doing in my previous bands. I was like, well, I could do a solo project and that would be cool but this music kind of sounds like its own thing. 
I was like, so why don't I just take this and just like make a whole new project out of it? Cause like, it felt weird to just be like, this is my name, like on this project. It felt like its own entity or like its right. own thing. I was like, so that's where I came up with the m- name mirror cell and actually like centered like an aesthetic and like art form around it basically. Awesome. Yeah, it's cool. It's 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 a wild um the music's a wild trip. Because when I first heard it, I was like, oh shit, this is some straight up industrial. Then immediately I was like, I don't even know what <laughs> is this a genre of music that I'm not aware of? Or is this just like uh, yeah. his own and then it, like none of it and it all sounds different too, in a good way. And that like there's a cohesive sound to the music, Thank but you. it's not like you can go, oh, this is a, a punk rock band. You yeah. know, it's it's sort of like, it's very art. I guess it, it's like art rock kind of in a way. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've, I, it's with Mirror Cell, I've said this before to like other people I've done interviews with. It's like, I'm influenced by so many different things that it's impossible for me just to stick to like one sound and just be like, oh, we're just a hardcore band or we're just a punk band. Um, like I love so many different styles of music. Like one of my favorite artists is Bjork um, uh, or like Portishead, just like weird, like alternative, like, Oh yeah. I was, I was style of music. For that, for yeah. Bjork fucking screaming her head off. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, like fish dying. Half the time. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's the thing is like, I'm influenced by just so many different like genres and eras of music that it's like, whenever it comes to writing music, it's almost impossible just to be like, okay, let's just make a song that's just strictly this. So that's why like a lot of our songs, like we have heavy songs, but there's a lot of like electronic influence in it, or there's like some, maybe even like almost like hip hop or like, uh, like R and B style influences in there. And same with like some of our more, I guess like melodic songs, there's like a lot of shoegaze influence. Um, and then like heavy, like, I guess like metalcore esque influences. So it's like always an amalgamation of something. Yeah. No, that's cool. That I dig that. I like that. I like mm. weird. I like uh, p- picking the different pieces. And yeah. then it's cool to break it down, though, because then you sort of like figure out like, oh, like I, I was thinking about earlier and right before you got here, I was like, oh, Power Man 5000. I bet this yeah. dude likes I Power love Man 5000. I love Power <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah. My, my old band actually played a show with them and uh, I think it was Mushroom Head. Okay. All in the same bill. That probably checks out. Yeah. Uh, I used to work shows when I was like 17 and one time we went to Iowa and we worked this weird concert where it was like Power Man 5000, P.O.D., That's Primer sick. 55, Soul Fly. It was the weirdest That's sick. show ever, dude. And it was in Des Moines. We just shot a music video in St. Louis and P.O.D. had just left the studio that we shot in, like literally like hours <laughs> before we went together. in. Pable on death, so the whole, dog. Yeah. So the, the whole time we were just bumping alive and yeah. like Southtown and all that shit. And it was just they, like, uh, <laughs> it was just like such a fun experience. It's just like P.O.D. was just here. P.O.D. something else, man. They were something else. Dude, that was a weird thing. I love P.O.D. Yeah, weird. It's like one of those weird things where it's like, oh, this Christian rock band hit mainstream rock radio, and it's like, yeah, they're Christian rock, but like they got riffs. Yeah, like yeah, they got yeah. riffs like and slamming bands, parts. Like, there's so many bands that are like throw down. Yeah, like, there's so many bands that are like that where you don't real like you don't even realize that it's like a Christian. Like they yeah, started I no off idea. playing two Christians only. You know right. what I mean? Like that exactly. Was their intention. MXPX same way. Yep, they're a Christian rock band. Punk. Christian pop punk. <laughs> I've spent, I've, I've seen many a show in a church. Like there, there used to be all these churches that would have like an all ages venue in it basically when I was a teenager. And it would be like the weirdest thing. Cause it's like people like death metal, but it's like, but it's Christian. Well, or, it's at or a not. church, but yeah, but generally yeah. the musicians were not a hardcore Christian. It was I mean, a I, weird thing. I would love to rip a, a church gig. I just feel like with our aesthetic too, being like all yeah. gothic and stuff, it would, it would work. Yeah, that would work. Um, I've always wanted to. I'm hoping we can. One day you'll get there. That'd be sick. What, uh, where did you grow up at, Nate? Right here, man. Um, kind of, kind of split between, uh, living in the city and also in Lee Summit. Uh, so my father 
lived in Lee Summit and my mom um, lived pretty much like right in downtown. We lived like right next to Town Topic Burgers. Okay. Um, so it was pretty sick because I grew up skating. So I got to like, like Lee Summit, like didn't really have anything like skating wise except for like one park. But whenever I come here, like or go over to my mom's house or apartment in the city, there was Penn Valley and like all the like famous spots and then Escapist before Escapist moved out to Lee Summit. It was like right there. Yeah. So got to go skate like over to that shop all the time. It was just, uh, it was nice. It was fun. Yeah. I know Nick pretty well. He's pretty red. Nick dude. Folio. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. sick. Escapist. They took over this. Uh, do you know it used to be there? No. Wait, which one? The Lee Summit one? No, the one downtown. No. It used to be a place called Wayne's House of Choppers. And it was an OG motorcycle shop. Oh. With like gnarly ass dudes. Old Wayne's. That place was cool. It, it was so like. So just always had dope shops. Yeah. It, I mean, it was like a weird vibe. It was like OG biker dude in there. It was cool. It that's was a sick. cool place. I wish it was still around, but they've. It's That's. 20 over 20 years yeah. past now you know? did they move or did they just no the old man died i believe or got oh. sick or was ready to retire and then the kids sort of like have just they still go to the swap meets and stuff but mm, they okay. just sort of ran it all it's just faded into the oblivion into the lore you know past my time yeah <laughs> so lee summit how old are you nate uh i just turned 25 Oh shit! So you're a little younger than Nico. I was gonna say because if you were skating, and but you would have been like ten. Yeah, when Nico was at the skate park, you know. Yeah, most likely Nico skated. Mm-hmm. That's sick. I didn't know that. Yeah, there's this guy Jasper that was just on recently, Atkins, and uh, he's got a band called the Wet Nights. Uh, to check that out and he used to be in this band called the leisure boys and they were all from lee summit they're from they're lee yeah summit i checked guys. that out okay. that's cool yeah they're they're rad and jasper's here for a little bit longer healing up from a surgery and they got a sh- yeah. couple shows going on i think oh that's sick because okay. he's sort of doing a similar thing like where you got so he he kind of had a band he plays with in in denver and now he's got the guys here and they kind of play with them so he calls that the leisure night and then the wet nights and now he's getting he's moving up oh. to upstate new york okay sick so he's kind of got like a split band thing going on yeah it's sort of like his deal and then he has people that play with him you know what yep, I that's mean? So that's exactly what mirror sells basically yeah, like <laughs> it's, it makes it it's i mean it's pretty easy if you got if you i had a band and was like seven piece band like garage rock but i made all the songs so simple that anyone that we knew that was like a decent musician could play with us yeah so we would have like a show be like okay well we need to uh so and so can't make it and neither can this guy so call up these two people and there's like uh greg from 989 the rock used to fill in with us that's awesome. And uh, Mikey from Crete 66, like all these OG rock and roll dudes. Yeah. I'd, be, I'd just call them and be like, be like okay, we're going to practice for an hour. And they're like, all right. And so we'd go practice for like an hour. And they'd be like, I got it. It's, it's all yeah. really simple it's pretty, stuff. Pretty, yeah. 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 Pretty simple. <laughs> I made really, I write really simple music. Yeah. Same. I try to. Uh, like the Mirror Cell songs like sound super complicated at some points, but they're really not. Right. Like they're pretty, pretty simple whenever you strip them down like bare bones. Yeah. It's probably the, the complicated part probably comes in the arrangement, right? Like as far yeah. as like when to put in the samples and, and like the, uh, I guess, I guess you call it synth noise, but it's really like yeah. samples, I guess, is what it probably mostly is. Yeah. I, I, there's just like a lot of layers yeah, it's it like that industrial that like, yeah, there's, exactly. like, there's like there's like if you if you just type in like industrial yeah. samples, I'm sure there's like a basic format that yeah. like not that, that's what makes industrial music though. Pretty right? much, like, yeah. It's just noises. Yeah. Um but yeah, there's there's just layers on layers on layers of stuff, uh even like vocally and uh you know, I would like you said synth wise and everything. So like once you add it all up, it, it sounds really complex. But then whenever you like actually when you, just take it away, like layer by layer, like oh, this is actually a pretty simple. Right. Like, when you break down rhythm. like the guitar, the 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 instrumentation of yeah. it, it's it's not some overly complicated. Yeah, there's no like shredding that I heard, no. which I like. <laughs> I, I'm not a big sh- shredding's cool, but like my, you know, my last band was like shred band. It yeah, shred band, but like our writer. Um, like our main songwriter, he was, he was really talented, um, and just wrote like really like complex like parts. 
um, which fit for like the style of music that we were doing, but, um, it was just like really hard to play and it made it to where like only he could play it. Like yeah. anyone else we tried to get to like join the band or like fill in for guitar, like would have a hard time learning yeah. the songs, which is now it's not really like that. They're pretty simple songs. Like our, the next song that we're releasing this Friday is like literally just one riff, yeah. like the entire song. That's like there's, sick. It I breaks like up into one part, but I like a song like that. I like, I'm really into like, uh, like early punk but like pre-punk like garage punk from like the 60s so it's like stripped oh, down like okay weird shit that's like it's like three chord music sometimes it's like no it's just a there's no like chorus verse structure it's just like a riff like you're saying like it's just a riff that goes yeah and then the, and the words change but that's about it yeah when i think of like early punk i think of like sex pistols crass uh chaos uk like stuff like that yeah, what, what, like what bands punk. oh when i think of early yeah. punk did the original punk rock band is for sure the mc5 and the stooges and the r.i.p stooges Wade Kramer yep. just died the motor city five they they were out 67 i think and then the stooges came out in 69 about to recorded say that in 60 so that's first stooges record was recorded yep. in 68 so that means they were playing those songs probably in 67 so it's yeah. pretty wild when you break it down like that and then people argue like over, it was the ramones was it the yeah. ramones or the sex pistols it's like well no it's actually the stooges. yeah it's actually the stooges and, and they the sex were, pistols like ripped a lot of stooges riffs so I yeah mean. and so I, that would be when I think of when I think of like the original ori like where did punk come from? I would say that if you're talking about early punk that I think of, definitely that uh, Joy Division is yeah. like something. Um, and then when you get into like hardcore punk, I'm definitely bad like brains. a uh, I bad I kind of hot take. I kind of like bad brains. Kind of don't. It's all right. I mean, they are legendary. I, yeah, I like Minor Threat a lot. Minor Threat was definitely like, or I would say like the first like hardcore punk, at least from like, cause that's the thing I'm young. So what yeah. do I know? But like from my research and like growing up listening to that music from what I understand, it was like black flag. Yeah. There's black flag. I'm a, I'm a, a Reagan youth guy. Like I yeah. like the Reagan youth. That's that. If I had to pick any of those bands from the early eighties, if, have I, you, if uh, I could pick one, yeah. it, I'd pick the Reagan youth. Have you heard of a band called gate creeper? Gate creeper, gate creeper, they gay do, creeper, gate creeper, gate creeper. Not okay. <laughs> gay creeper, gay creeper. He lives down the street. Dude. <laughs> uh, um, I have heard of gate creeper. They just recently like did a split with Reagan Youth. No shit. I'm pretty sure. I, I, I'm, someone might fact check me. I might be wrong, but yeah. I'm pretty sure they just did a split with Reagan. Dead Youth. Boys. I really like the Dead Boys. What are them? Uh, they're like this crazy New York band. I like them. I saw this punk documentary when I was like, when I was like 15, there was no like internet like there is today. So like if there was some sort of thing that came out like on DVD, yeah. you were like, oh shit, or VHS even, you know? Yeah. And I watched some like, I feel like it was like a VH1 show and it was like the history of punk or there was like a part of some history of music thing that was about punk and Mike Ness was on there. I was like, Probably that's 15 yeah. talking about uh the dead boys and then i went out and bought that record would you say that's your favorite like punk or hardcore band Ooh, of all time nah if and i couldn't even break it down into favorites it's so hard because there's I, so many different genres and styles yeah there's so many different eras. genres and styles, but like mad ball yeah that that reigns like pretty supreme for me yep. um and then beyond that, like Rancid, I would like never deny any, like a, a, any dude that ever like punk dude that's like, fuck, nah, dude, <laughs> no, they, and, and, and no effects, no, no effects. effects Rancid yep. fall right in there together. You know what I mean? Exactly. And that was sort of, I mean, and out came the, and out come the wolves. It came out in 93 and I'd have been 10 years old. Yep. And I remember like, being like, I don't know, man. I had to be like 13 because my sister would have been like on the cusp of like hanging out with friends that drove, you know, like yeah. at 15. And so there was this dude that would come over to our house all the time that he drove like a firebird and he always had on that old misfit shirt of Danzig, like the Elvis Danzig yeah. with the mic. Stand. I used to have that shirt. Yeah. I and every day I would harass it. this dude and just ask him like, yo, what is that shirt? What is that shirt? What is that shirt? And finally he just gave me 
He's like, here, just listen to this. And it was a Misfits collection. That's so sick. So that got me into the Misfits. Because that is 100% my favorite punk band. Punk band. Controversial take, because a lot of people... Yeah. Horror punk, rock right. band, whatever. Um, I, early on, like harassed my mom and let me sign up for one of those like columbia house like get the cds in the mail deal and i realized as an adult that it was just like the shit that they had too many copies of right so like the little the thing was full of punk rock music oh shit hot take i just pulled over my whole table uh (laughs) it was full of punk music so at a very young age i got this influx i got operation ivy like this the whole collection which i still i'll jam that forever um, the Dead Milkmen, like it's like this like greatest hits. It's like a, a career spanning deal that they had put out. Fears, fear. So it was like a weird thing. Yeah. Like, uh, like that's so cool that you got to experience it like in that era because punk music came to me. I would say like later in my life because in my teenage years it was like emo, uh, post uh, like metal. Post metalcore, metalcore, like deathcore, like yeah. all that shit was like the cool like music in my high school. Like it was like Suicide Silence, My Chemical Romance, Motionless and White, like bands like that. Yeah, like that was like what I like grew up listening to in like my teenage years, and of course I listened to like hardcore and stuff like that. But I would say like punk music, like I've started like really getting into punk and hardcore music, um, like in my like. Like, and I was like 19, like after high school. Yeah. Because during high school, it was just like emo music and right. post-punk and, stuff. And see, Nico is like that too. And that must be like some Lee Summit thing. Like, Probably. I think it might be like a heavy influence of like, there might be like, there's always just been a scene for that there. Yeah. But I, I started out only listening to like the oldie station. And back then it played like Same. 50s and 60s music when I was a kid. Like yeah. it didn't, it ain't oldies 95. Ain't oh, okay. That, what yeah. it used to be, right? I was thinking like 101 rock. Like, no, no, no. I'm talking about, I was listening to uh, music from the late 50s and the early 60s. Okay, cool. And then I got into the Beatles, but only like early Beatles. Yeah. Like I like, I like that shit. And then from there, like it started evolving to where like, I got I kind of like grew into like liking new wave music a lot, and then the punk stuff came in, and then once punk hit, it was over. Like yeah. that was it. I, I didn't. I was one hundred percent like it's funny. Didn't listen to nothing yeah. else. All all the kids at school like Slipknot and Pantera, yeah. and everyone I hung out with was like on that metal tip. kids, and I was just like, yo, that shit's lame. I'd go to parties <laughs> and put like. Like I'd put random shit in that everyone else hated, but I'd be yeah. like, get out of here, dude. Like, That's this, sick. This rules, you know? It's funny like how that was for you because for me it was like my dad, like growing up, like my mom was like really into like Weezer and like a lot of like, like Fugazi and stuff like that. And then my dad was like a deadhead and was really into like CCR and the Allman Brothers um, and the Beatles. And it's like, I, he like listened to like Metallica. Like that was like the heaviest like thing that he would put on and whatnot. Yeah. So it was like, I grew up like listening to that music and liking it, but then it was like whenever I actually started discovering like music on my own and started getting into it, it was like disturbed and Lincoln park and Pantera, Papa Roach, stuff like that. So it was yeah. like, that was like kind of like your punk. Like that was my punk basically right. like growing up because that's what was cool. That was what was hot. Um, and then it was like, after like, I kind of grew up and started like exploring different genres of music and stuff. It was like, oh, like there's a whole other, like there's a whole other realm to the world, whole other decades before this of music that I have yet to discover. And that's whenever I went down the rabbit hole and started listening to like the misfits, rancid, uh, crass, you know, all those other bands I listed off before. Yeah. I, I went and then it was, everything was punk and then everything was like, oi. Like, I was big into oi music. I was big into, like, street, like, early street punk, like the Ducky Boys, the Bruisers. And I was hanging around all these, like, sharp skinheads. Because there's, like, huge, like, like old school, like, sharp skinhead thing in Kansas City and in Lawrence. My sister lived in Lawrence. I was hanging out with them. It was it was a wild time. Like, when I remember I saw the Dropkick Murphys when they first came oh, out. Sick. Like, I, that was at, like, 15... I saw the t-shirt from their first tour. Oh, damn. 
That I might was a be fat worth some ass money. kid back then. It's all trash, dude. It's oh. all, like, it's <laughs> it's all, all tore up, up yeah. no <laughs> sleeves <laughs> on still. it. Like I was destroying shit when I was a kid. But it um Yeah, and then from there, as I got a little older, I started like going like, okay, like and then I started like tracing it back. Like I would trace the music back. And I was like That's exactly I was like I did. flowing yeah. backwards, like, okay, where did this come from? And then one day I found this weird uh, compilation CD called Garage Beat 66 and it was just all this like early garage rock from like from 1966 and since then it's it's been like this full blown like like yo I can tell you Billy Gibbons first band was the Moving Sidewalks and yeah, like you got the lore I, I hit Ted Nugent was in this band called the Amboy Dukes before he was Ted right. Nugent and they were like psychedelic rock Bob Seger is like my favorite of all time Sick. and he had like three he's he's like the Silver Bullet Band is his third band there was the Last Herd there was the Bob Seger system like yeah it's it gets crazy but the music is like it's all punk rock like that's just there's no way that like the early punk, that's what those dudes were were finding. You know, like when they no. like when Zeppelin found the blues, right? Well, early punk found these weird garage right. rock singles, and they're like, "Oh, we can just we'll rip this style off." Exactly, and, and, it just progressively got heavier, and it got just got heavier. You yeah. know, I still love punk though. I'm I'm to the, I, I still I go buy records all the time. I you know I'm a record guy. So. Yeah, I yeah. Do you do you collect vinyl or do you collect? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay, try so. to mostly new. It's like I'm weird because I really want it to sound good. So like I'm not like an audiophile, but like I'm I can't also afford original copies of most of the records yeah. I want. But also I look for new music. So like I'm really big into the idols or idols, not the idols. I'm really big into idols. I'm really big into. Amel and the Sniffers is this weird ass punk band from Australia. They fucking rule, dude. Um, the Viagra Boys, I like oh, a that's lot. That's a sick name. Yeah, they're 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 sick. Um, but then there's also bands like everybody freaks out about that Turnstile band, and a bunch of people are like, "Oh, you'll love this!" Like it's like, and I listened. To it, I was like, it sort of sounds like the Just Walt Youth Disney of version of Madball. You know yeah, what I mean? Mad, it's Madball, like, Youth of Today. Like. Yeah, but it, but. It, I fuck with Turnstile though. Yeah. I do like them. I I I didn't. I just it didn't jive with me for some reason. I yeah. I discovered them probably when I was. I don't remember how old I was, but I found a nonstop feeling, and it was like, it was so cool to me at the time because I was like, oh, this is a newer band. And yeah, I was like, they, right. They sound like an older band. Yeah. Um. And it was really cool. Uh, it's it's also cool to see like where they are now, and their music's like really weird now. Like it's yeah, it just got really, and that's what I heard first. So mm-hmm. had I heard it when it first came out, I might be like, oh yeah, this is I could jive with it. Yeah, but then I'd probably be jaded and be like, this, this sounds nothing like them. Like, yeah, what they are have they a, doing? They have like a lot of like house music influence and like just like weird stuff like influence on their recent album. But I, I still like it. I still think it's pretty good. Yeah. Album. And I, I like think, weird I, shit, so. I, I like Idols because it's like a weird, it's very weird. It's very like dark new wave-esque, like post-punk music. It's like dark of. wave yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's very post-punk. It's like, it's punk, but also it has like a heavy, like, you know, like that early 80s, like fucking Joy like Division. The Cure. Like the Cure. Smith's right, type like, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Gang of Four. It's very, it's got a huge Gang of Four influence. Nice. They fucking rule though. I was pissed because they played at the Truman, but they had all these fucking COVID restrictions, right? Mm. And so I was like, well, I can't, I, I can't go to that. You Dang. Because I didn't have, I don't have the vaccine or anything. Oh. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, yeah, before anybody freaks out, my doctor told me not to get the vaccine because I had a heart attack right before all that shit happened. It, good on him, too. Probably saved my life. Probably saved after, your life. Yeah, yeah, after the fact here, good on him. Thank exactly. you, Dr. Bart. Uh, but 
<laughs> as soon as disclaimer. Like, then when the show happened, they didn't have any of the fucking restrictions. I was like, oh, God man. damn it! I should have just bought. I bet the you now you could probably go see them, and it probably wouldn't be an issue. Oh yeah, at all. no, it wouldn't it be an issue. I could have saw them that time if yeah. I would have just because they had dropped all that shit off before the show even happened. Was it was are they not like a touring band that like no, comes they are, around but that they're often? from England? Yeah, so they're not here, and they're coming back, but they're only they're like on this weird like they're like jumbo level now so they're like playing oh, like so seven, now, 10 shows yeah. you know what i mean yep. that's unfortunate yeah but i've been lucky enough to like see most of like i've seen uh i've seen rancid multiple times i saw no effects multiple times i saw i've seen the dropkick murphy so many times i can't count like in <laughs> in small theaters yeah. flogging molly bad religion i saw oh. like I saw them at Kemper Arena, dude, opening up for Blink-182. Dude, what a sick show. I was 15 show. years old. MXPX, ba- MXPX, Bad Religion, then Blink-182. And it would have been on the the Damn It album, I guess, because I was 15. Yeah. And my sister and I went, and we got into... It was right when they hit... Uh, when What's My Age Again was huge. Prime Era. And Prime Era, but like also... Like not prime era to be a punk rocker, right? Because it was it was very much so like oh like you're a punk. fag era still, <laughs> yeah. Like to where if you had colored hair or spiky hair or whatever, yeah. And we went to that show. We must have gotten to like ten fist fights. Oh, not wow. even uh, over exaggeration. There was jocks everywhere. There was like it was. It was nuts. Yeah. It was a nuts show. So Before, we watched Bad Religion and we yeah. left. I've never, to this day, I've still never seen Blink-182 oh, in concert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, uh, growing up, there was so many shows that I wish I had gone to like now, like bands that like aren't around anymore, aren't doing stuff like these days or are like older, I should say. Like yeah. never got to see Slipknot, uh, never got to see Pantera because, like, in my era, it was all about like the metalcore scene, yeah, so, or like deathcore stuff. So, like, I was going to like all the like warp tour style shows. You didn't really miss out on Pantera live, I, from <laughs> right. what I've heard from I mean, everyone. The, yeah, it's I like they were the best live shows towards the end. Yeah. I've seen Slipknot; it's cool, right? But again, unless you're like that's your shit, right? It's I mean, it's just. To me, it was just like, oh, cool. Like I, I saw that. them very early on. Like, was it was a five finger death punch that's lead singer died? Um, was it? Oh no, drowning um, pool. Yeah. So like, right before the year that dude died, like they had that tattoo the earth tour, and I was working yeah. shows for Pipeline Productions and Lawrence, and we worked that, and Slipknot was on that. Oh, nice. And like all those big metal bands at the time were on that. So I, I like, I kind of saw them, but I was just like, and I've, that's yeah. happened a couple. I've seen the thing them is, a few it's not times. really your genre. Then it's nah, not really gonna I'm matter just like to you. Like hanging out yeah. with this hippie dude Jeff Forty I worked <laughs> with. He's actually, I've seen so many shows because of that dude. He's the one that got he. he we wanted to go see Blink-182. That's how I ended up working for this dude. We wanted to see Blink-182. My sister's husband at the time was working for him. They were like 18 and married, you know, punk yeah. rockers. And so Jeff got us tickets to go see Bad Religion. Yeah. And then as soon as Bad Religion was done, dude, we went to the city market, to the river market, where my my brother-in-law at the time was working and it was George Clinton and the P-Funk All-Stars. I was also I have this weird thing with George Clinton, but like I'm I'm like way into George Clinton and have been since I was a little kid. <laughs> and and we got to meet him and he was like just everything you wanted him to be. He like barked like a dog. He like licked my sister's hand instead of, he like grabbed my, he like licked it and started barking like a dog. And I was like, I'm like 15 freaking out. Like, this is the best. This is exactly just like, I this envisioned. is the dude from PCU. Yeah. Like, this is what I wanted. But that, that was a weird night. And then after that, I, I started working for that guy. Worked so many weird shows. Kenny Wayne Shepherd. We, we, we were Kenny Wayne Shepherd. I've, I've, I hung out with the Misfits. I was about to say, did you ever get to see the Misfits? I did. I saw the Lucky. first show I ever went what, which to. Which era, though? Was it Graves or Danzig? Or both? I, uh, I, I've i kind of seen both. This was uh, right be- like in between Famous, or in, right before Famous Monsters came out, they went on so tour Graves. in 2000. This would yeah. have been 2000. That came out in 99. Actually, 
because Amer- Monsters American Psycho came out Right, so American right Psycho before, came out right, right before Famous Monsters came out, the year before it came out, they were on tour. Yeah, and or maybe yes, it would have been a year or two years before. So I saw them on the American Psycho tour because, and they came here twice for some reason with mm-hmm. that record, and I went. 15 years old uh bought two tickets there was three of us i've told this story a fucking million times long story short guar was opening oh sick i ran into dave brocky out front didn't know who he was he's just this dude he's like what's wrong with you tell him the story about how i'm bummed my friends can't come in we don't have enough tickets yada yada <laughs> they go put him and dr chud put us on the guest list really and give us four tickets T- scalp Dave Brocky scalped my tickets because that was like a huge deal then. Uh-huh. Scalped my tickets, got me into the show or got us into the show. Gave me like four hundred dollars cash from scalping my tickets, and then I went and bought every T shirt they had. I bought everything. We all Dude. had swag. So yeah, that's that's sick because my first album, my first introduction to the Misfits was Famous Monsters. Great record, and it is and. Though I think Michael Graves now is a dork because of all of the yeah I don't proud care. boy yeah. shit uh, whatever I don't I don't care about any of I don't that. care those about two it. Records I, guess, are I separate the art from the both artist. Those records but are that badass. fucking and that's that's the thing is everyone's a huge Danzig fan, rightfully so. Danzig's amazing. I love Satanic Elvis, but there something about Famous Monsters it has so many good hits on it. And same with American Psycho. Oh, both those... Uh, it's uh, just got hits. They're both... Yeah, they're just really rel- well-written songs is what it is. And I think, yeah, like a lot of people didn't like it and there's a lot of controversy because it wasn't... There oh, was no dancing on it. all those bitch asses. All yeah. you... Look, Which, I'll tell you right now. All you punk asses, you <laughs> old fucks. You were all at the show. You can't You deny all s- paid the money to go. I was there. I remember. I remember you guys all talking shit and you all still bought the $50 ticket. You know, and you still went to the show, so shut the hell up about and it. And you already. can't deny that Saturday Night is not a great song, dude. That whole American Psycho, uh, the uh, American Psycho, also did both album. those records you can listen to from start to finish yeah. easily. They're great, they're cohesive. Records. They're very good. But that was my first concert, like all free, no. That what me a and hell my of buddies a was Guar, the Misfits, Ignite, Dude. and Reach the Sky. I just watched the uh, Guar doc- documentary on Shutter. It was so good. Oh damn! I don't know about that. I have to watch that. I'll give you my Shutter login. Oh, you sick. can watch it. Hell yeah! Uh, but uh, freebies. Free- <laughs> no, th- that uh, would have. Oh, uh, to finish that whole thing where I started. So then, when I'm working for them in 2000, this is a fucked up story. I've told this before. I was working concerts the summer before my senior year Mm -hmm. the misfits are coming i volunteer to get there at seven in the morning that day to park buses yeah so i'm parking buses i'm pulling in semis i'm like fist fighting satanic church members for parking (laughs) spaces down in downtown lawrence because they were playing the granada and the misfits got there and we were loading in we loaded in i ended up uh Meeting Doyle and Jerry came up to me asking me where Gold's Gym was. And I'm like, I don't of fucking course. know, you know, and I'm just looking Gotta at them get like, my holy pumping. shit, dude, these guys are huge. Yeah. And then the drum tech needed a ride to go get shit, whatever shit he needed. So I took him around and we were like shooting the shit and I was a hard worker back then. Yeah. And I was excited, you know. So me and that guy go, he's like, hey, I'm going to let's go. I want to I need I want lunch. I don't want to eat. I don't, I'm not getting takeout. Like, so we went eight and like, I was just talking to him and he's telling me about the tour and how they, they don't party at all. Nobody does drugs. Like they're very, they're actually like super Christian and like all this shit. And I'm like, Oh, interesting. The Misfits. Yeah. 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 They're all like new East coast. Right. They're just, dude, it's all, it's all art. It's art, man. Obviously. And, uh, so then we get back and like, then somehow he's like, Hey, Come on, because I got he got me like the cool laminate. You know, I got like a cool laminate. Yeah, I used to have yeah, all access. these like we used to have. All, we always yeah. got like cool shit like that. We'd have a laminate or a press pass or yeah, they'd have some sort of pass for the stage hands. And uh, uh, I went. He took me to the green room, 
And I got to hang out and watch them all put their makeup on. Sick. And then I got a bunch of autographs. They gave me some merch. And then that night, dude, they called my mom on the phone to ask her if I could go on tour with them. Did you? No. It's one of the... One of the few regrets I have in my life is not just <laughs> that would be one for me going too. fuck it and going with them. But I don't live my life that way, right? right. And, and my parents also probably, hindsight, you know, knew like if this dude leaves, he's never coming back. How old were you at the time? 16. 16, yeah. I would have on 100%. I, I might have been 17. I was probably 17. Yeah. I was 17. And they're like, we're not. And I was like, I would have been 18. I've, it might have been before my junior year. I'm yeah. not, I, well, what year would that have been? Oh, that would have been 2000. So, yeah, I would have been 16. I would have been 16 because it was Damn. the Misfits 2000 yeah. tour, I believe. Yep. But, yeah. Right. So that was I, right when I was born. Yeah, I, I, I would have been like 16. And my parents were like, well, you're not going with these people. And my brother-in-law, everyone was like, yo, you got to let him go. go. You got to let him go. <laughs> oh, and I could it could have been 17. It might have been 2001. It was probably 2001, because I think they toured that record for two years, yeah. too. I've seen them all said and done with Michael Graves, I think, three or four times. That's so cool. That's 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 my favorite era of Misfits. Yeah. I can't deny it. But then I, the Mecca was I saw Danzig on Halloween oh. at the Uptown Theater. He played here one year on Halloween. Original Misfits lineup? Nope. Just, just Danzig. Danzig. Oh, so and no, I, no but, misfits. It was just Danzig. But he or played Sam Danzig songs. I can't remember if Doyle was with him or if that was later. But dude, it was like Ghost opened, I believe. Oh, dude, and sick. like it was before anyone knew who they were. Yep. And I thought they were just wearing. I was like, man, these guys got really elaborate Halloween costumes for tonight. <laughs> yeah, just just the gimmick. Because I didn't night. know who they were. But man. To see Danzig, and then at the end, he basically just played Danzig 1, part of Danzig 2, Sick. and part of Danzig 3 as an encore. And it was like, what? Damn. It was cool, dude. That's sick. I fucking love that first Danzig record. I love the first three, yeah. really. I really love the first three. But that first one that's got Chuck Biscuits on the drums, like that yep. first Danzig record is like, that's like, pfft. that's... That's something else. Again, it's, it just, it's the closest it, thing we'll get to having Sam Hain records on Spotify too. Yeah, and it's it weird that none them. of that shit exists. Like, I gotta understand it. that because it's it's weird. I don't know. It's some weird thing. I think with it's like Danza him and Yuri Vaughn yeah. have a beef. Yeah, hundred percent. But whatever. I can't yeah. keep up with these old punk guy drama. <laughs> It'll be on there soon. They'll Probably. somebody will need money. Anyway. When Danzig tired of being like, fuck you, he'll he'll decide to share the money with everybody else exactly. again. Yeah. Because that's all the misfit shit was. Yeah. And he actually lost all of that. I think he lost. Like they were what the, I think what the real deal was like they were all licensing the fucking trademarks out. Yep. And making their own deals. And then eventually it was like, okay, everybody like you yeah. could, oh, there's plenty. Like, dude, you could buy a Misfit shirt at Walmart at one point. Exactly. That's fucking nutty, dude. Yeah. I saw Slipknot shirts at Target. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Everybody sells out, dude. Yeah. You got to. Get that money. Get the bag. I remember when I, at Hot Topic, I when I was to a sell kid, at Limp Biscuit made shirts that said, fuck Limp Biscuit and sold them. And, and then we Topic. found out that, like, later on, like, oh, Fred Durst made these. Like, of course. Yeah. yeah. Like, he was just, they were, he was smart. It was a smart play. He's a, he's a, he's a genius marketer. I was trying For to sure. convince Nika that we should start a t-shirt company where like it's two two different companies, but like one is like all like liberal <laughs> politics shirts and one's like Republican shirts and yeah. we just sell to both sides. You know oh, what I mean? Genius. Like, it's like a gun, like you know, like a warmonger, you exactly. know, we'll just fuel the fire here. <laughs> That's genius. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's happening right now. Exactly. You know? Oh, 100 percent uh, that's it, awesome it sure though is. to go back on the the misfits thing that you were talking about like to be able to like actually be there in person because my old band uh played with doyle because he has Sick. a side project yep. um and it was like the weirdest like experience ever walking into the venue uh like loading in our gear and he just has a bench press out like on the stage yeah. floor just pushing weights and he like gets up has no makeup on yeah and i'm just it has like a beanie on and shit and i'm just like yeah who's oh my god that's fucking doyle 
I was like, holy shit. And I like went up and shook his hand. I tried like so hard not to punish him and just ask him questions. Yeah. So I was, I was trying to be like really cool. It's like really nice to meet you, man. Thanks. It's, it's an honor to be here. Yeah. Like that was it. Yeah, he's um, j- j- dude, they huge. did the same thing then back then. I would and imagine, like, yeah. you know, they were just beanies, no makeup. They're just like New Jersey looking dudes yeah. too. It's like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. It's you guys, huh? <laughs> I wish I used to have that Christ the Conqueror cassette tape. Oh, see, I somewhere along the in, in the lost years of my drug addiction, I don't know what happened to it. I traded it off to somebody, uh, probably. Mm-hmm. Probably just gave it away at one point. I was like, "Fucking take this! I don't got a cassette player, you know." <laughs> right, cassette now, it's players. Like, it's probably like a five hundred dollar cassette day. Man. Damn, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wild, but yeah, I love dancing. I, you know, weirdly enough, dancing won't re-release. None of the dancing records are re-released on vinyl. Yeah, so I can't. It's I, all I rare. want Danzig one, and I can't get it unless you buy it, it for like seven hundred dollars on eBay. Yeah, and I, I won't do that. No, I agree. Won't do that at all. I'll just listen to Danzig on Spotify. I want to listen to on Spotify. I listen to illegal uploads on YouTube so he doesn't get a Download dollar. straight off LimeWire. LimeWire, baby. <laughs> Fucking Napster, dude. Yeah, man. That's awesome. Back in the day, we used to steal our music. Hell yeah. Those Take things that actually helped all music because we found out it about did. so many bands that we did, we would have never been able to like. Yeah. You hear like one song on like one of those punk comps. You, you're like, well, how do I get this? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I remember I downloaded like, uh, I think it was like Linkin Park or something. And at the end of it, there was like, I think like half a minute of a Breaking Benjamin song or something like sick. that. And I was like, wait, what the fuck was that band? Like at the end of it. And I, uh, this was before Shazam and all that other stuff. Whenever you could just like figure out figure what song out, it is yeah. from the, from the recording. And I just remember like going on the internet and like typing in like what I he- thought I heard and like the lyrics from the song and ended up finding that it was Breaking Benjamin. And then that was open up a whole new rabbit hole See, for me. Luckily like that, all kinds of shit you could find on the radio back then. Like I've yeah. never been into a genre of music where it's like, Oh, I'll, I'll, somebody will turn me on to. You know, I find all the good punk bands on the yeah. radio. You know what I mean? It was always like you some guy had to fucking hand you a, a yes. cassette or yeah. like they used to make five dollar comps. So like Epitaph would make them. Yep. Fat Records would make them. Fat Music for Fat People. They were like five <laughs> bucks. They'd have them everywhere. And like I liked the Fat Records one because on it, it was like this rec- this CD cost four dollars and ninety five cents. If they charge you more for that, refuse to buy it. That's sick. Because it's like, no, these are five dollar CDs. Yeah. They're not, they didn't make any I don't think they made money on them. The idea was like if all these kids buy this comp, then you will find these other bands and you'll you'll go to Fat Records and you'll you know their Support website the and you'll bands. order yeah. you'll order the record from the band. Or you back then you could go to Best Buy. Like all yeah. that music was like in like CDs you could get, yep. you could buy Rancid at Walmart. They had an yep. edited copy, but that's when wa- everything at Walmart was edited, dude. All the, all oh, the like music censored. Was, all the music was censored. Lame. Dude. It was weird, weird times. <laughs> what, um, what do you say? So do you still live in Lee Summit? Where do you live now? No. So I live in Kansas, like kind of close to Lee Summit, pretty much just in Kansas City without giving okay. up too many details. Yeah. Like South um, Casey. Yeah. Um, and, Lived in Lee Summit at one point for a little bit, um, but I I moved away from there and lived in the city for a while. It was it was so weird driving down here. I saw the Ferris wheel for the first time. Oh yeah, I haven't been. I haven't lived well, in the city on, in a now, minute. Now that's Missouri. I live in Kansas. Yeah, this is KCK. It's, it's weird because it's like we right are. I, yeah, well, we just. I just, I don't want anybody out there thinking that I live in Missouri, but yes, yeah, that <laughs> that I would that never Ferris wheel, be associated. Yeah, I would with never Missouri. be associated. I would never. <laughs> why not? Why go till I do? I got literally got Wyandotte County tattooed on go. my <laughs> County all day. Uh, yeah, the Ferris wheel thing's weird. The whole downtown's getting crazy. It's, it's, I couldn't do it anymore after getting my car broken into and like where I lived, like right off Main Street at one point, and it was oh, just yeah. like. We live like right next to bars and hookah yeah. lounges and shit, and it was just pandemonium, full oh, time, it's... loud, annoying. And that's the thing is like I'm like I'm an old person like at heart, like I like quietness. Yeah, and it was just uh, it was a hectic time. That's why I'm over here, dude. I don't, yeah. I won't. That shit don't fly over here. Yeah, it's you quiet. Can't, chill. Yeah, you can't. When you steal somebody's car and you get caught, 
they prosecute your ass. Exactly. They don't do that in Missouri. Nope. They don't care about property crime anymore. No. But yeah, so what do you... Um, did you ever go to college? No, I didn't. No college? Graduated, and uh, that was pretty much it. What do you do for a living? Uh, so I have like my day job. I don't really like talking about it too much, like publicly, just because okay. people are weird sometimes. Okay. But, uh, I have my day job. It's pretty sweet. I get to work from home. Um, Sick. But uh, other than that, like it's, it's just music. Without saying what it is, is it like customer service? Is yeah. It, yeah, yeah. Okay. Much. So you like yeah. you like an you, IT job? IT yeah. job. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Which is great because you know being into the world that I'm into with like music and like production and everything. Like it allows me like knowledge and insight into like computers and technology and stuff like that. Yeah. That, like I wouldn't have necessarily like known or acquired on my own. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really sick. And then also with like being like able to be remote, like it's made it like really nice for uh, like writing music and having like more of like a, I guess like luxury of, having more time to create and stuff as opposed to like before, like where I would like actually have to go like clock in somewhere work and I get home and be exhausted and not want to write or do anything. Yeah. It's a pretty sweet gig. That's awesome, dude. That's a, that's, that's cool. There's ain't no shame in that. Like I work at a body shop. I ain't got no shame and no, if you, you could come in here and be like, yo, I work at fucking McDonald's. I'm like, that's sick. Yeah. You figure out how to work at McDonald's and make a living and do music and art. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's nice. It allows a lot of like creative, like freedom because before I was working, like I was, I used to deliver for FedEx and, um, it was, uh, it was a nice like job. Like it was cool to like be able to like go and like listen to music and stuff. And before that I uh, delivered like pizzas and shit. So. FedEx, the, the fucking breeding ground of heavy metal musicians. Every dude it's I've true. ever known in a metal band worked at fucking FedEx. Dude. It is true. <laughs> FedEx or UPS. Yeah. Like some type of mail but delivery. Usually, usually Not FedEx because it was non-union. So you didn't yeah. have to like, they weren't so harsh on the drug testing back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, it was sick. I would just get in the van, Blair, Deathcore, Death Metal, Cannibal Corpse and shit, and just like drive through these like super rich neighborhoods in Gladstone. It's like, yeah, they're just people be out like watering their plants and be like, as I'm driving by, because my fucking speaker was so loud. Yeah, we got a buddy when we were growing up, Derek, right? Derek, if you're watching, what's up, dog? Um, He, uh. He worked at UPS. Him, his dad did yeah. too. His dad was like a metalhead, and then he got a job. And while we, that's were, so funny. And he had just like he never went to college. Did he? By the time he was like twenty one, he was, I think twenty one. He was out of the warehouse and into a truck. That's driving. what it was like for me. Yeah, and so he I was like, in the warehouse too. And that was a union gig. That dude had more money than all the rest of us put together. Dude. So he was always buying concert tickets and records and all kinds you, of shit. Yeah, for for anyone uh, that's that's in a financial rut that needs like a different job, like if you can get your class F license, you can make bank at yeah. FedEx. And eventually, if you get your CDL, like a lot of the drivers that I used to work with eventually got their CDLs. And drive the trucks. Drove the trucks, made hella fucking money. I know More money guy, than what I definitely make now, but. I know a guy, he used to, he he drives local now, but he used to go over the road and yeah. team drive with another guy and they pulled tandems and triples. Yeah. And they would like, dude, because like while that guy's driving, you're sleeping. So they would just like, they would hoof it, dude, 24 seven. Because they would like go eight and eight yep. and eight and eight and eight and eight. And they would just hoof it 24 seven and, be gone like four days just yeah. come back looted up with a bag and yeah man that's what i was considering for a while um until i got the opportunity i got to be able to work in a different field and um because i was like getting into music and like i really wanted to like make me or sell a thing it was like okay this is like probably the route i should take like yeah, for my yeah, life dude. and to if like because eventually i would like to tour and i would like to uh be more involved with me or sell. And I feel like the career path that I was going down before would have hindered that. Right. And so it's like, now I feel like I have more of like an opportunity where it's like, I can still technically do my day job while also pursuing my dream. Cause all I need is well, you could be on tour and still, yeah, you could be driving down the highway with your phone as a hotspot. And- yeah. Eventually. I mean, that's every musician's dream is to just do music full time, but 
the reality is, is like, you, yeah, you got to have your day job. Yeah. For right now, for sure. That's how you keep the wheel going. Yeah. Dude, I, I've, I've thought about, I've been doing body work for, dude, like 20 years now, basically working mm. in shops. And it's like, there's days where I'm like, yeah, I, I, with as much as I know about, like I built my PC and like yeah. I learned all this stuff about computers. I was like, I could probably get into doing something with computers or something. But it's like, then all the time I'm just like, nah, I just keep beating the shit out of my body every day doing yeah. cars. Yeah. I, mean, I make pretty good money though. So I can't. Yeah. If you're comfortable, complain. that's all yeah. that matters. Uh, Do I work like 30, 30 hours a week maybe yeah. and, and make more money than I ever made? So I really can't. Yeah. That. Can't complain. No, I'm going to work if, at like 10 o'clock most days yeah. and get off at like yeah. three. Dude. <laughs> the other reality is too, with like most like IT or tech jobs is it's just customer service that you yeah. have to be fluent with. Like I worked a lot of retail. I worked at a hot topic, obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, um, like yeah, when work- I saw you, I thought Nate for sure worked at a, a mall hot topic. At yeah. One point. Zoomies hot topic. Yeah. You obviously. did the gamut. You ran the gamut. I ran the gambit, man. Um, shitty restaurants and shit like that. But yeah, it's, that's the reality for anyone that is like tech savvy and like wants to get into it and doesn't like really know like how it's like, you just have to have a good customer service portfolio. And then it's like, most of those like jobs will hire you because a lot of the stuff that like the IT field like requires is like stuff that like they can teach you. Yeah. Like the technical stuff is the it's easy not anything part. that you would know unless right. you like are trying to get like a coding job or something. Right. It's like that's like stuff that you have to actually like study or go to college for. Right. Like, right. Right. Without no, don't want to bore people. <laughs> oh, they they were bored. They get bored about five they, minutes. They tune out whenever we and talk about the talk, Misfits for an hour. They the story about uh, fucking Guar for the 700th time. They've all <laughs> tuned out like, Jesus, we know, dude. We get it. The guy from Guar got you into the show. That's funny. I was super bummed when that guy died. I love Guar. Guar is awesome. Oh, we was, actually, that, was like, that Euronymous? Yeah. The lead singer? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Documentary got, almost made me cry. Do what? I said the documentary act actually almost oh, made no, me cry. Yeah, I, I, I got to see that. I gotta see that. That that's probably really there was good. so much crazy shit in there. I didn't know about like how one of the I think it was like the guitarist or something. Like someone like shot at them like while they were on the road. Oh yeah, I bet or something. He got like hit in the spine or some crazy shit, and they had, like yeah. pull over, and he like almost died. Yeah, they uh, they're just like a crazy fucking. You know, they're from like the, they're like mountain people, dude. Yeah, they like they're just art house junky fucking weirdos from yeah from from like the oxy cotton belt of america exactly <laughs> they're from the heroin belt man they're cool i i i was talking to somebody the other day they're like yeah there's that song they put on the radio is a fish fuck and i'm like fish yeah fuck. i don't think yeah. they played that on the radio dude and they're like no they did and i'm like dude the lines of that song are fish fuck baby whoa yeah i want to fuck you in the fish and they were like <laughs> What? And I was like, yeah, that's the that's the opening lyric to this song. I don't think they were playing that on the radio. Yeah, because if that was on the radio, it would be like, lady. Yeah. Yeah. You just wouldn't hear like, I mean, anything. they would edit shit back in the fish day, but I don't lady. I don't think they edited Fishbuck. That was a, I can't remember the name of the album. It's the one that looks like the stone and it says guar in the mouth of like the carved out stone guy. I don't remember. That was the tour that they were on. But I still, I have a pole, I have a photos like from a a disposable camera that I had of like that day of that show of that misfit show. I've got pictures of the misfits. From you gotta back, show me. Uh, they're not here, but I'll grab <sighs> I'll grab them from my Send parents next time I'm out there. But they're like, but it's got guar. Everyone's wearing white shirts and they're all covered in fake blood. And it was fucking that's it was awesome. Wild. What a wild thing to go to as a kid. Yeah. Hey, where are you guys going? Oh, we're going to go to this thing where this guy's got a big alien penis and... Call the cuttlefish. Blood and jizz over everyone. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> where the fuck are you going? Where, where, wait, now, wait. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, well, Nate, uh, you know, we're going to have to leave room for a part two here. I don't even know how long we've been going probably been a fucking hot minute these things yeah. Are, yeah we've been going almost an hour doesn't feel like it 
No, it goes by quick, dude. There's times like I've had to start paying attention because like with Nico, we barn burned at one time. It was like four hours. I was at his no. house and we were like, I had four hours of footage and I was like, oh yeah, we got to totally not do four hour long episodes. Like keep yeah. them under an hour and people will listen and exactly. it'll rule. Um, so everyone go find Mirror Cell on Spotify. There's a YouTube. Yep. Um, you got a website? I can't remember what all you sent me. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty simple. You, if you want to listen to us on Spotify, you just look up mirror cell. Uh, if you want to listen to us, Apple music, same thing, YouTube, all that jazz. Um, and I'll ins- put the links in the description of the video for all Sick. that stuff. Yeah. Instagram just, we just changed it recently. It's mirror cell dot TV. Um, and on our Instagram, it's got a link tree that has like all, all of our other socials and shit. So Sick. yeah. Yeah, I was at first. I didn't like when I, I when you hit me up because like Nate hit hit me up because he hit up he met Nico. He Nico told him about the show, right? Like or somehow, yeah. right? Well, I yeah. So I, I oh, met Nico. Nico wanted to know where if he knew anyone where he could help promote. Yeah, Nico told him about me. Then over time, Nate had asked once, and I didn't fuck him off but i just it gets lost in the whirlwind sometimes and then we made a plan to do this a few weeks ago and i got brutally got sick. sick and then so now but i i will say like when i first looked you up i was like okay and then like i see your old lady and i'm like well they're super gothy i'm like i don't know if this dude's gonna like me and then you're then when you message me you're like i really like what you do i was like okay so he already knows what i got going on yeah yeah i saw um uh, Cause I, after I, when I met Nico, I like found, like got his Instagram handle from him that day, followed each other and he's a super talented guy. And I was like, I really want to work with this guy in the future. Uh, like whenever we start doing merch and stuff, like he's just a wickedly talented artist. And I just love the different styles of like comic books, like style sketching and illustrations. Oh yeah. Nico's, he's my little brother. Yeah, really? Not not really. We claim that, but not really. I mean, by choice, not by birth. Damn. Uh, but yeah, it, I, uh, and then, so I've been keeping up with him on Instagram and then I saw he was on your show and your show looked really cool. And I was like, I yeah. think like the whole aesthetic and everything is, this looks fun. And then I just went down the rabbit hole, listening to your, your pods and everything. And was like, yeah, I was like, this guy seems like a cool dude just to like talk to about and like pick his brain yeah. about music. Cause I'd and li- heard in your previous podcast, like you knew like a lot about like old punk music and hardcore and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm sort of like a, rock and stuff master of none jack of all trades, trades yeah. kind of guy like i just music is that thing i've always loved so i i but also like it's the one thing like i've geeked out a lot about you know what i mean like yeah. the shit i liked like i would like i did drugs for a long time so like 10 years of being a drug addict it was like and i was in a rock and roll band so you like find out all this weird shit and you you know you just go down the rabbit hole but yeah I uh yeah I know a lot about I so much so that I don't even think I know shit you know what I mean and yeah. I'm just really like it's like just stupid knowledge in my brain yeah I and it, it might just be that I know a lot about the music that like people your age are interested in because it's from when I was a teenager yeah. you know what I mean exactly it's like from when you guys were born you know what I'm saying You're like so oh you like, kids like the Deftones now that's fun yeah like, that's I cool. remember when they first started yeah, like <laughs> I remember I remember when I hated that band 20 years ago yeah. and I still hate them now. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> Just a dude screaming, shove it! I felt I hate corn, dude. Things I hate: corn, uh, limp biscuit, hot take. I do not like Rammstein at all. I understand That's why right. you like them, but the reason I don't like them was the weird shit that they would do on stage. It just. I, it just really freaked me. Hey they man, just, that's that's the beauty they freaked, of art. They were, yeah, they were on a different they were on a different trip than I was yeah. back then, and I was just like, yeah, I can't get behind this. this I totally is, understand. Say I fucking Marilyn Manson. Like I never got into Marilyn Manson. Oh, was I was huge. Into into Manson. Any of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, most people were. Most people are. Yeah. Most people like Marilyn Manson. Yeah. I still am just like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good on that, man. Like, yeah. I hate a lot of the shit that most people like, <laughs> like, but I'll play you something. And Certified you'll be like, hater. You'll be like, what is this shit, dude? And I'm like, oh, this is my hey, favorite. Dude, dude yeah. <laughs> that's that's the beauty of music. It's I like, like weird stuff, dude. Yeah. I don't like any, you know, when you're into punk rock, it's like anti-mainstream and shit. Yeah. So I just, I get that. I got like, as a youth, I was always like, it was very like fucking 
you know, gate there's a lot of scene gatekeepers and shit. And I'm not that way at all. Yeah. I try to turn people on to the things that I like. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that way you you know about them. But there's just like all these things that I just it just never it's like jazz music. It just never it didn't it didn't like the pieces don't they wig my mind out and it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make me feel like Black Sabbath. You know what I yeah. mean? So there's all kinds of weird shit like that to where it's just, there's some bands that I'm just like, yeah, man, it's cool. I get, I get why everybody likes this shit. What's I mean, I could see what's why your guilty pleasure though. Uh, my guilty pleasure. Yeah. Oh, like music wise. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, but see, I don't think it's a guilty pleasure. I like that answer. You know what I mean? I don't think it's a guilty pleasure. Exactly. Like, I just like what I like. But yeah, I mean, a lot of people would weird out. Like, I like, I really love 80s music, dude. Like, like, like post-punk stuff. No, no, no. Or like 80s, like. like the, the fucking decade. <laughs> like oh, uh, everything. Yeah. Like, okay. Like when you think of like 80s hits, like I just love a lot of that shit, dude. Like, you know, you spin me right round, baby, right round. Like I, li- I, I like all that shit. Like I. I Girls just want New Order. Uh, yeah, Cindy Lauper for sure. Yeah, for sure. I, I like a lot of, a lot of wild shit. You know, like Nina, like there's just a lot, a lot of that eighties music that I like. Dude, it just you, you know. know what's funny about eighties that you mentioned that I secretly have an entire EP done of eighties style of music. That's sick. That I recorded. I'm down with it. Did Send all it my over. Own. I'll use it. Yeah, for I'll sure. I use it as, for the show. I'll I use uh, it as the intro. Yeah. It's like a it's a project I just had no idea what I was gonna do with it. And I'm just like waiting for the right time to release it. So it's like, I, it's completely different than anything else I've ever done. But I also have a soft spot for like eighties music and stuff like that. One of my favorite bands of all time is the Smiths and the cure. Yeah. So I'm fucking, but I hate the Smiths. (laughs) I fucking hate the Smiths. For for right reasons. A lot of people do not like Morrissey, (laughs) but I can't I I was at sister Anne's and I told Frank, I was like, "Ah, fucking Smiths suck, dude. And everybody's like, what? I'm like, dude, they fucking suck, dude. Get out of here. Certified hater. Certified hater, dude. Dude. I respect it. But I also know like a lot about like, you know, my kid and I were talking because she's really into hip hop and she likes the far side and she likes West Coast rap and she's like into Tupac. She's 14. And nice. I was like, yeah, I'm really not. I don't I don't get Tupac, man. Like there's yeah. a couple songs that I'm like, yeah, it's OK, but I'm really like I don't get that. I, I, and it's like I like the Three Six Mafia. I prefer that. I like UGK. I like Memphis Houston. Rap. Yeah. I like Memphis rap. I like Houston yep. rap. I like Southern rap because that's what all the OG dudes were listening to it as a teenager. It's cool to see a lot of like, I would say like newer, like rap artists like uh Puya and suicide boys and stuff that have that style, that three, six mafia style. I just took her to see suicide boys. That's her favorite. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We went to that big tour. They had the grade a tour. Oh, sick. That wasn't, um, who else is there? Ghost main Zillicami. Yeah. I not Zillicami. Well, Zilla Kami is Cemetery, City Morgue. Or Cemetery. City Morgue. City yeah. Morgue I love there. City Morgue. Yeah, she likes all that shit. It's like shit. hardcore and rap. I, I, thankfully, my homeboy Dalton, his buddy is their sound guy. Sick. And they kind of filled him in on like what had happened. I got custody of her a year ago. And uh, they he came out. They got us really good. They got us better seats than what we had. They mm. like We were right down front. Like in the oh, scene, nice. like right on left of stage. Then they came out. He brought her hoodie, T-shirt, all kinds of shit. Dude, that's it. It was like sick. Yeah, it was really cool. It was cool for her. Like that was a cool thing. I'm glad we could go. I mean, I did. It did cost a lot of money to go. That it was like fucking two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, concerts are different now. That yeah, it's different now. I saw the Misfits for twenty five bucks a piece. They <laughs> yeah. like fifty bucks a piece, something like that. And I had to go to the Hen House. Yep. To go buy tickets through Ticketmaster. Back yep. Then, dude. So, yep. Yep. I crazy. remember going to see shows at the Granada all the time in the Bottleneck. Um, and other venues like here in Kansas City, like the uptown and shit. And like tickets were always like 15, 20 bucks. Yeah. And um, there's a band that I really like uh, that's blown up recently called Fleshwater. And they were playing at this venue in St. Louis. 
and uh, I checked the tickets and it was like 70 bucks. I was like, this band just came out of the woodworks and it's $70 for these fucking yeah. tickets. And then it sold out. And I was really bummed because I should have bought my ticket. But uh, it's crazy how expensive shows are now, dude. I was like, I was expect. I that's the thing is like being in a band. Like I'm really used to like being close to the promoter, so I could get into for free a lot of the times. Right. Or like my band would be playing, so it's like I just got to tag along and not have to pay. Obviously, um, so I, I was not used to the like having to pay for a ticket to go see a band. And uh, whenever I signed into Ticketmaster to get my tickets for that show, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, 70 bucks. Oh, dude, I went to see Madball at the record bar and like whatever service. It was like a $14 surcharge. And luckily, I got a homegirl that works there. I'm not going to peep her out because her boss might see this or something. <laughs> I doubt it. But like I hit her up. I was like, Jesus Christ, it's like doubles the ticket price for yeah. taxes and the service charge. She's like, I'll just put you on the guest list. I was like, sick. That's the shit. Whenever you get the guest list. Yeah. Hook up. Yeah. I can always get into an ICP show. You a juggalo? You a juggalo guy? I'm, I'm not. Eskimo brothers with both of Violent J and Shaggy too, though. What the fuck? Yeah, dude. We'll talk about that next time. Yeah, for sure. I need Straight to up. You know about that. Direct. <laughs> no for facts. You got to clip that for Instagram. Uh, I'll let this. It just. That's all AI. I use. That's how I make all those clips. Is AI. <laughs> I use AI. It'll probably hear ICP Eskimo bro and definitely clip that. Oh, dude. That's crazy. Um, no, not necessarily a juggalo, um, though I am down with the clown. Um, I had I had like a little juggalo phase whenever I was a teenager. And for whatever reason, like my dad and my grandpa at the time were just dicks to me about it. I was <laughs> I was listening to like Hocus Pocus or something. Yeah. Um, or I don't remember what song exactly. Uh, I think it was something off like the Juggernaut album. Or like that's like their best I think stuff. Great Malenko came out in '90s. Yeah, so it was like a compilation album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like listening to that or something, and they like heard it like through my headphones or some shit, and they were like, "Shoot, like a juggalo or something," and, like grilled me, yeah. and then it like scared me like listening to them, and I just like didn't they were listen just afraid to. Afraid you joined a gang. Yeah, I grew up in a town like they bred juggalos where I'm from. So yeah, it, I'm, I grew up in Bonner Springs. Oh, nice. It's out by the Speedway. Yep. Like some they, people think it's They used nice. to do Warp Tour out there, so I've yeah. been out there a lot. Oh, yeah. I've been... I, I've got saw, my skull bastion at the Warp Tour. I've... I saw Manson, Rob Zombie up there. Probably. Maybe Avenged Sevenfold. I don't remember which band. I will say, I'm not a huge Rob Zombie guy, but I did see Great Rob Zombie live. live and it, Alice Cooper opened up, and um, was it the Murder Dolls, maybe? The Murder... Joey Jordanson's band? That he did with the guy from Wednesday 13? Yes. Yeah. They opened up, then Cooper, and the Murder Dolls were Cooper's backing band. Sick. But it was sick. And then I was in the 98.9 The Rock Suite that day. And they were like, how did you get in here? Because I know a bunch of the people on the That's morning sick. show. I was like, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I just came here for the free wings and beer, dude. Yeah. That's a sick venue. Yeah. Well, that was at uh, the... Whatever the fucking arena in Independence is now. It was oh, like stadium? the Finkelstein Eye Center oh. Arena back then or whatever. Oh, okay. Now it's the Cable Dahmer Arena, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where that show was at. It was like right when that place opened. Like the parking lot wasn't even finished being constructed. Yeah, I saw a zombie on the Twins of Evil tour with Manson. Um, unfortunately, uh, Manson was not that good live. Um, I, I don't think he ever was. I don't. I, yeah, unless you saw him in like the like the Antichrist superstar era. I don't think it's, it was, it'd really be a good experience. Yeah. Um, still cool though to say I saw him, but it yeah. was, it was Rob zombie. That was like mind blowing for me. It was just such a sick live show. Like yeah, fan dude. of him or not. Like I'm a pretty big Rob zombie fan. I like a lot of white zombie stuff more, but his live show is fucking crazy. Yeah. It's a cool show. It's, it's a so cool great. Show. And I love his, and the, the, I love his and, films. And so it was like, they sound that's almost something that's like, oh, I could see this live. I'd prefer prefer to see them perform live than to listen to their records. You know what I mean? Agreed. Like, it seems, seems yeah. better. I, yeah, for me, it's like I go back to Astro Creep, which is White Zombie. Yeah. That's like my favorite yeah, album. Yeah, I remember when that came out. It was everywhere. Yeah. But I was more into the Butthole Surfers at that butthole time. Butthole Surfers is sick. All right, everyone. Well, 
Nate, thank you for being here. Thanks for coming over. Dude, it's been a pleasure for meeting you guys. Go check out Nate's band Mirror Cell. I'll drop all the links. Like and subscribe the video. Go check out all the other shit, the live streams. You know the deal. We don't have to keep telling you this. If you made it this deep, you're a fucking, you're a fan, you're a a fan boy, a savage. I don't know. I don't know how deep people get onto these things. So we'll see you guys next time. Hell yeah. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like and subscribe buttons and check out one of these other videos. We'll see you next time.